It's time for our responsive reading. This is a weekly practice that we do together here at Beacon Church to uh, consider and confess together the truths that unite us as believers in Jesus Christ and followers of him. Last week, Adam taught us uh, in our question, what is baptism? And this week, we're continuing to consider baptism. Uh, The question clarifies this further, asking, is baptism with water the washing away of sin itself? So just does following the Christian practice of baptism, does that actually wash your sins away? And maybe if you've been attending Beacon Church for some time now, you you might be smirking, Um, but people do believe this. And uh, as we consider it, look to God's word, let's take this opportunity to consider and delight in what actually does wash away our sin. So let's turn to scripture. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 to 21. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he has opened for us through the curtain, that is through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. So this verse here says that it's the blood of Jesus Christ that gives us confidence to enter God's presence. The sacrifice of Jesus is what sprinkles our hearts clean from an evil conscience. The sprinkling here is a reference to the Old Testament sacrificial system where the priest sprinkled the blood of the animal sacrifice on the altar. The animal was offered as a sacrifice for the forgiveness of sin, but now Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has offered himself as that sacrifice for those who believe in him. So the water of baptism doesn't wash away our sin, but the sacrifice of Jesus Christ does. So why do we baptize? In Peter's first letter, Peter's talking about God saving Noah and his family through the water, then concludes with this statement, baptism, which corresponds to this, that is the saving of Noah and his family through water, now saves you not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We remember that Jesus Christ commanded us to be baptized upon repentance. And Peter says here that baptism is a symbol of God saving us, uh, just as he saved Noah through water, and it's our uh, appeal to God, but it's through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We see here that washing ourselves with water, like just a bath to remove dirt from our bodies, does not save us. Only the Spirit of God can do that through the saving work of Jesus Christ. The physical water baptism is a symbol of our appeal to God and our trust in Jesus Christ. It's an outward sign of an inward change. And if we think that just doing the outward sign changes our insides, we deceive ourselves. Or, like maybe the Pharisees, we're more concerned about doing the outward signs to appear righteous before others. And uh, Jesus offers this rebuke in Matthew 23 against that attitude. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you clean the outside of the cup and the plate, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and the plate, that the outside may also be clean. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which outwardly appear beautiful, but within are full of dead people's bones and all uncleanness. So you also outwardly appear righteous to others, but within you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. God sees the inward condition. Does this mean that our outward actions are of little importance? No. Our inward condition always affects our outward actions. Luke 6.45 says, the good per- The good person, out of the good treasure of his heart, produces good. And the evil person, out of his evil treasure, produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Jesus Christ commanded us to be baptized and baptize others following repentance. It is important and necessary to obey Jesus and outwardly mark ourselves as believers in Christ by water baptism. This baptism, like John's baptism, is an outward sign of the washing we receive from the Holy Spirit in the blood of Jesus Christ. 
Like any outward sign or symbol, it isn't worth anything without the very real thing that it does represent. For those who have been baptized, remember to place your hope anew this morning in the death, life, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, which your baptism symbolizes. I invite you to stand and join with me in the response after I read the question. Is baptism with water the washing away of sin itself? No, only the blood of Christ and the renewal of the Holy Spirit can cleanse us from sin. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, which was spilled for us. There is no forgiveness without the shedding of blood. Our works on their own leave us condemned before you. But you wash and clothe us by the works and righteousness of Jesus Christ. You adopt us as sons and daughters. You give us a family in your church, and you call us to identify publicly with this family through baptism. We praise you today for your faithfulness in the face of our unfaithfulness. Lord, we thank you for giving us uh, signs to help us remember the very real things which you have done for us. And spirit in our weakness, make us faithful that we may bring glory to God, our God and Father. Amen. It's time for our five minutes.